Honestly, this show deserved like seven seasons minimum. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So I know I've been saying it for a million years, but they were finally doing it. We are covering a non-Disney Channel ship. And I thought that it was only fair that the first one we cover be one of my personal favorites, which is of course, Katie and Aiden from Alexa and Katie. Now, unlike the ships that we usually cover here, their story only spans across seven episodes. And so if we were to do chapters, we would really only need like one or two chapters to cover their whole story. And so we're just not gonna do chapters today and we're just gonna jump right into it. Because although their story may be short, these two really just won me over with their enemies to lovers excellence, and I feel like won so many other people over as well. So their story begins in season three. Katie and Aiden first meet in the fifth episode of the third season. Katie is hosting a food drive for the holidays at the coffee shop that she works at, Wired, and she's giving away cookies to the people who donate. So Aiden comes in and takes a cookie without donating, and then she gets mad at him. And I'm just like, talk about a meet cute. You, drop that cookie. What cookie? That cookie, the one in your hand. They're for people who donated. You did not. Looks like I did. <laughs> not bad. Not great either, could use a little more butter. Later on in the episode, he comes back and this is when Katie gives him the nickname of Cookie Crook, but this time he's come back with a donation, which I think just speaks for itself. Like this guy took time out of his day to come back with a donation when really it wasn't that big of a deal to begin with. Like it just shows that he is actually a decent guy. He also teases her by calling her canned food display a food triangle, which just pushes her buttons further as it's supposed to be a Christmas tree. Aiden comes back a couple episodes later when we see the girls at Mini Putt trying to de-stress before their SATs and he works at the closing mini putt course. She immediately recognizes him as the cookie crook and they banter for a bit about him not telling the group in front of them to stop lollygagging and then she ends up calling him infuriating. Look, Aiden. <laughs> My friend and I are trying to relax before the SATs tomorrow, but you're just making me more stressed. You know, I have a foolproof way to prevent SAT stress. What's that? We'll care less about the SATs. You are infuriating. I get that a lot. Near the end of the episode, Katie gets her hand caught in one of the mini putt sharks as she's trying to get her ball back. And he uses this as an opportunity to tease her again, saying that all of the employees have extra balls and she just has to drop hers and take her hand out and he will give her one. But then once she removes her hand, he's basically like, uh-oh, and realizes that he doesn't have any spare balls on him and tells her to check inside the shark. And then the last interaction that they share in this episode is at the end when Katie gets upset about not being able to make the final windmill shot and she decides to destroy the windmill with her golf club and he cheers her on, which I think is really cute. But their real story begins in the following season, which is season four. So in the second episode of the season, Aiden comes in too wired and they scoff at one another and he teases her again, asking if she's beat up any windmills lately. And so a nice little callback to their last episode together. It is then revealed that he is going to be their new employee and that she is going to have to work with him. Now, before you start training me, you should know I learned better with the reward system. Mm. <laughs> and you should know that being cute won't work here, okay? I am the assistant manager, which means for the next four hours, you answer to me, pal. You got it? Got yeah. it. Good. Just one question. You think I'm cute? Wiped on the table. <laughs> so this brings her to draw his attention to the notebook that she's created to help her with working there. And he pretends like he doesn't care as he tries to drown out her talking with the coffee machine. She makes a comment about how she's gonna have to add working with a difficult employee onto her college essay, which causes him to add cute onto that sentence. So teasing her once again. The following day, she comes in to get her notebook that she forgot there. And he goes on to tell her that her essay isn't very personal. And so she gets upset with him for looking at her notebook, but then he gets her to tell him the real reason why she took this job. She explains explains that she needed the extra money because she is a single mother who was going to school and so she needs to pay for things herself. And so he ends up getting her to see that that's what she needs to add into her essay. At the end of the episode, she catches him reading from her coffee notebook, revealing the real reason why he looked at her notebook to begin with because he thought that it was the other notebook, but he doesn't want to admit that he needs her help. And so obviously Katie loves this revelation and she goes on to gloat about it. This is also the episode where we find out that he has a bit of an artistic side as he goes on to change all of the chalk artwork in the coffee shop to be this like alien theme and everybody loves Loves it. But the next episode that we're gonna talk about is when things really take a turn, which is in episode four. So things start off as per usual. They're both teasing one another, him about not having to do any of the closing duties as he's still a trainee, and her about a noise that he made earlier when he tripped over a napkin. So he goes to leave as his shift is over. And then once he's gone, Katie starts to have a panic attack. She doesn't know what to do. She calls her mom, but she doesn't answer. And then luckily Aiden comes back and he's able to sit with her and get her to calm down. Okay, now uh, tell, me, uh, tell me how bad I am at making making drinks, huh? I know you want to. That's good, that's good, but you could do better. How about, uh, remember when I 
slipped. <laughs> mm, there it is. There it is. Good. There you go. There you go. And then he even goes on to start doing the closing duties that he was just gloating about not having to do as a way to give her some space so that she can calm down. Katie's mom then calls her back, but she says that she's okay as she has gotten help from a friend. Which afterwards he points out that she called him her friend and then they have a moment. And you know what the worst part of all of this is, is that we only have three episodes left. Like I feel like I haven't even really got to talk about that much and yet we're already like coming to a close. It's so sad. Anyways, in the following episode, we see them both working at the Wired coffee shop cart during the Stand Up To Cancer fundraiser festival thing. And there's this cute moment where he jokes about them starting their own coffee business together and then winks at her, which causes her to make fun at him for winking at her. And during this carnival, there's this raffle going on where if you win enough tickets, you can enter this raffle to win prizes. And since money is tight for Katie, she really wanted to enter this raffle so that she could win a new laptop. So keep that little fact in mind. So Katie ends up getting a bit jealous when she sees Aiden glued to the skee-ball machine, thinking that it's because of the girl that's over there that she keeps seeing him talk to. And then once he comes back over, she tries to get him to move on to one of the other games, using this whole thing as like an analogy for their relationship. You know, if you want to go play games, I'll watch the cart. No, no, I'm good. Yeah, I don't need games in my life. <laughs> okay, great. Then I'm gonna go play more ski ball. And uh, I'll be here helping customers. <laughs> what do you want? The episode continues and we later see her ranting to a random customer about not caring about what he does, clearly caring a lot about what he does. Alexa calls her out for this and she admits that it bothers her that it bothers her and that she really wasn't expecting having feelings for Aiden. So of course the episode ends with Aiden revealing that he was playing skee-ball to win tickets to enter the raffle for the new laptop that she wanted, which he ends up winning and he does give it to her. How else was I supposed to win this for you? What? That's why you were... I can't believe you did that. Thank you. <laughs> oh. He goes on to play it cool, saying that he just couldn't take any more of her sad laptop stories when really it's quite obvious that he actually did it because he likes her. A couple episodes later, Katie's crush has gone full blown as we see her giggling at him from afar as he puts bagels over his eyes. Alexa encourages her to go ask him to prom, but then he comes over and calls prom cheesy, but she doesn't let this deter her as she gets up and gets ready to go and ask him, but then she gets too scared and leaves. At work the next day, she confides in him as to what's going on between her and Alexa as they had previously agreed to go to the same college, but now Katie has been waitlisted for NYU. So he advises her to tell Alexa and then reaches over her to put some coffee beans away, which results in a moment between the two of them where he's like leaning over her really close and all of that. Just tell Alexa. The longer you wait, the more stressful you'll be. Thanks for the bean assistance. The advice. Of course, we're friends. Friends. He then helps Katie once again by drawing the New York skyline onto Alexa's latte, but she doesn't want to tell her yet, so she messes up the latte art before giving it to her. So being too scared to ask Aiden herself, she does end up going to prom on her own, but luckily that's not where their story ends, as he does show up at her prom to surprise her with a corsage and everything. I'm sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I'm cute, but sometimes not that bright. <laughs> I thought you didn't like prom. <laughs> I don't. But I do like you. So they go on to have a wonderful night together. He supports her in telling Alexa about NYU and they also share a moment while dancing together, which is just so adorable. But unfortunately, all of this does bring us to our finale. So Aiden is doing his chalk artwork at Wired again and Katie encourages him to apply to art school, but he doesn't seem too enthused with that idea. And then they go on to have the talk, as in are we really going to be starting something now just a few months before she has to leave for school? They end up deciding to spend their summer together and Katie thanks him for helping her see that she doesn't always have to take things so seriously and kind of compares that to their relationship. Then we have a time jump to two months later where Katie is getting ready to leave for college the following day. During their goodbyes, Aiden reveals that he took her advice and is going to be going to art school and he also encourages her to call him if she ever gets too stressed out and says that he knows that she's going to do great. And then they kiss, which just makes me so happy because their story was so short that I was worried that we weren't gonna get to see them share that moment together for the first time. And I'm assuming this wasn't the first time, like they probably kissed over the summer, but it was still nice that we got to see them kiss once before their story ended. New York tomorrow.
You can do great. And if you ever get stressed out, just call me, okay? I'm gonna miss you. Yeah, me too. So although this is where we end things today, I really don't think that this would have been the end of them. Like I'm sure that these two met again down the line or maybe they later on decided to try out the whole long distance thing. Like I just feel like once these two explored other relationships, they would have realized how perfect they were together, which like would have brought them back together, you know? Or maybe that's just my delusional opinion. But yeah, I guess that that's all I have to say, which feels weird because I'm used to sitting here for like a couple hours, but that's just not the case with these two. They really only gave us like the tip of the iceberg, which I'm honestly kind of glad about because I feel like if their story was any longer they would have had to give them conflict and like I don't like to think about that I like just their perfect happy enemies to lovers story arc with a little bow around it like that's all I need so yeah let me know if you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you liked seeing me cover a story that was kind of more so on the shorter side because like I've said numerous times that was a bit of a newer task for me to cover but I think I did well I don't know um next hopefully is going to be one that is not short at all it's probably going to be my Violetta and Leon one which is probably going to be like a couple hours at least i don't know how long but right now i have the notes like just very 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 rough draft notes from the episodes and it's already 50 pages so i'm gonna try my best to weed it down to be just like the most important parts but even that like we're dealing with so many episodes that it's probably going to be very long and a lot of work but i'm ready i'm ready for that task um but yeah that's all from me i love you guys and i'll see you next month